should be specific instructions for reception of communion will be given later in the Mass. Please return to your pew after communion and wait at the end of Mass for the ushers to let each pew out. If you have a contribution for our parish, you may drop it in the wooden collection boxes near the baptismal font as you leave. Please join us online this Wednesday at noon for our last Trinity Live concert of the summer. Organist Cheryl Van Ornum from Richmond, Virginia will perform an all Bach concert. Weekday public masses will be offered this week at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday will be our Mass for seniors. The same link for Sunday Mass registration can be used to register for these daily Masses. The presider at this Mass is our pastor, Monsignor Joseph Lehman, assisted by Deacon Francis Redinger. Please stand and greet those around you. Go through all of, you go through all the rigmarole, and then you sit in your seat. You now your bag is up in front, and you've done all the procedures. You've gone through security. You've done all that. You've run and gotten to your, your boarding pass. You've done all that, and then you just... That's what it feels like for me, and I'm sure for you. 
you all have done wonderful with the safeguards. And it's so beautiful to watch you do it so well. Protecting one another, protecting ourselves. Thank you. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. You know, we have been saved by the grace of God in the person of Jesus Christ. It is the reason why we gather to give thanks. It is the reason why we do not fear. It is the reason we come before our God in need. So as we begin, let us call to mind our sins and the great, great mercy of our God. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion 
My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord.
shall testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, Proclaim on the housetops, and do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to open our minds and our hearts. Much mention of fear. I could not help but recall a wonderful slogan called by, call, coined by former President Franklin Roosevelt. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. But fear does haunt us. Fears for one's job. Fear for the welfare of our children. Fear about sickness. Fear of pandemics. Fear about providing for old age. And now political fear in our country and fear. Yes, fear of fear. For Christians, the worst fear is that we, we, we would be seduced from our relationship with Jesus and fall astray of his love and his mercy. The sensitive Gen Jeremiah in our first reading, who never wanted to be a prophet, knew conflict when he preached and suffered in Jerusalem before the Jews' sixth century captivity. Jeremiah told the king that the Babylonians were agents of God about to punish the Jewish people for adopting pagan ways and for seeking help from pagan allies. The king was told to lead the people in trusting God rather than in pagans. The king's counselors hated Jeremiah and were constantly looking for ways by which they could denounce him before the king, condemn him, or even have him killed. 
Jeremiah was tested. Jeremiah was fearful. Should he go along with the counselors and preserve his life? Should he get out of Jerusalem with its deadly politics? Or should he give witness to God and chance persecution from those gathered around the king? He decided to fear God rather than be afraid of these men. Fear God. That is a biblical concept that is often misunderstood. It does not mean that we should be afraid of God. No, not at all. It means that we should respect God, reverence God, and be concerned with fulfilling the law that God has given us and the world tells us not to. Jeremiah expresses confidence in God when on trial. In the midst of all those strong contradictions, he kept faith in God's promise, and he knew that the Lord God was with him. Listen, he says, but the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. His feelings about being an outcast, a stranger to his brothers, and all the insults against him, and at the same time, his desire to praise God finds perfect expression in today's responsorial psalm, asking God in his great love to answer prayers in times of terror, in times of fear. This fear of God, as discussed here, seems to me to be sim similar to a lack of trusting God in his providence, in his presence in our lives. I read a piece recently how trust and lack of fear are coupled with generosity. Let me explain. When we give something away to someone else, we have to trust and have no fear that God will in some way repay. When we donate to the parish, as you have wonderfully done over these past weeks and months, we have to trust and have no fear that we will have enough funds to pay our bills and save for the future. If we stay up late talking to a friend in distress, we have to trust and have no fear that God will get us through the next day with less sleep. If we volunteer on Saturdays to a charitable organization, we have to trust and have no fear that we will be able to find time to run our errands and complete necessary chores before Monday rolls around. The truth is, the more we practice this generosity, the more our trust in God grows and our fear dissipates. It often takes a leap of faith to believe that we really will have enough money, time, and energy if we give it away. But when we make a decision to be generous, we are demonstrating our trust in God which can set our fears to rest. We are giving God the opportunity to show us how he cares for us and how he watches over us. Either he will supply what we lack or he will give us the grace to do without. In either case, we will be blessed and in a significant way, follow what Jesus says to us in today's gospel. He says, fear no one. Speak about, speak about me from the housetops. Proclaim the message of the gospel. Doing exactly that can make you unpopular and give cause for fear. Keep your priorities straight. Fear no one. Jesus tells us that we should not be afraid of people who can kill us. And do not be afraid of the one who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Our cause for any fear should be with someone or something willing to kill our soul, separating the soul from God's love and God's mercy. In one of the most incredible passages of Scripture, Jesus says, Are not two sparrows sold for next to nothing? Yet not one falls to the ground without your heavenly Father's consent. And every hair on your head has been counted. And for some of us, that count has been going down for a few years. So do not be afraid of anything. Each of us is worth much more than a flock of sparrows. The Lord says, fear him who can throw your body and soul into Gehenna. This is not a 
popular concept in society either. We emphasize God's compassion and mercy, and this is good, but we tend to refuse to acknowledge his justice. In our own minds, we transform God into an imaginary figure that will not respond to our rejection of his life and his laws. For example, we sin and we say to ourselves, God understands. Well, maybe this God, with a small g, of our imagination might understand, but the real God, with a capital G, sees reality clearly. God's mercy is always available, and we should never refuse it when we are able to ask for forgiveness for our sins. But we live with a reverence and respect for the Lord, the biblical fear of the Lord, if we do all we can to be God-fearing. Then we do not have to be afraid of anything. When we live with a reverence and respect for the Lord, then all those concerns that the media and our minds delight in frightening us with diminish. Will the coronavirus destroy half the population of the world, similar to the Black Plague that destroyed half the population of Europe? We certainly pray that it will not, but we also know that live or die, what matters is we belong to God. Will the world end this year? Everything seems to be going wrong in 2020, so maybe, but probably not. The end of the world does not matter as long as we are united with God. Will an unnamed hurricane devastate the state of Virginia, causing loss of property and possibly life? Maybe, probably not. Will people attack us for being Christian? Absolutely. In fact, there are many people in sections of Africa and India that are being attacked for being Christians every day. We will, will we be disparaged because we are against abortion, the validity of marriage, capital punishment, euthanasia, trafficking of people, against racism, and all discrimination? This disparagement does not matter as long as we are united with God. We have nothing to fear as long as we fear the Lord. That's what Jesus said. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans tells us that sin has entered the world through one man, Adam, but that through another man, Jesus Christ, the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The message here is the same. Sin and evil and bad things will not triumph in the long run. Rather, God will triumph and vanquish sin and evil, resulting in reducing our fears and extending our trust in God. To cling to this promise of the Lord is the challenge of our spiritual life. Part of the fear that we have is fear of being tempted in various ways. The devil has three terrible lies that he assails us with sometimes directly, sometimes subtly. The first of his lies are, you are not good enough. To that God answers, I have made you good enough. I became one of you, I died for you, so I could raise you up with me to eternal life. The second lie is, you are alone. God answers, I am with you always. I know you, I know every hair on your head. I know what you are going through, and together we can conquer all challenges all fears. The third lie is the most horrible of all. It's that the person speaking to you is lying, that God is deceiving you, that what he says is not true. The response is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Fear and worry, they affect the entire makeup of a person. You can see fear and worry on the face of those who are affected. Jesus does not supply us with a medical solution. However, he does guide us with a spiritual recognition of the situation and an answer to calming our worry and our fear. Our faith tells us that we are united with God. He knows us, watches over us, can be our shelter when fear strikes us. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to proclaim our faith from the housetops, like he said, knowing his presence with us. Since no sparrow falls to the ground without the knowledge of our Heavenly Father, how much more will he be with us in times of worry? We are worth more than a sparrow. 
more than a flock of sparrows. Fear not, and let his will be done. Similar to Mother's Day when I had the blessing of preaching, I'm not going to say my amen yet, but I have a confession to make. Little did I know that the blessing that's going to be given to fathers at the end of this Mass was the same prayer I chose to say to fathers at the end of this homily. I'm not going to be redundant. So gentlemen, happy Father's Day, have a blessed day, and may the Lord be with you. Amen. Church, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we pray. For those who are set apart to preach, teach, or to minister in a church. May they bear witness to Jesus Christ fearlessly and without compromise. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, may they protect human life and rights, move to eradicate all form of terrorism, further the work of justice, and advance the freedoms of those in their charge. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers, May they imitate the love you showed for your son, and may they be blessed abundantly as they guide and care for their families. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, may we turn in prayer to Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to bring peace to our country, our cities, and our towns, and work to bring about an end to racism and discrimination of any kind. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, may they find their way in life allowing themselves to be touched by the heart of Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those trapped in lives of sin, may the gift of Jesus Christ free them from their bonds. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military and civilian personnel, as well as those families with a member deployed, may they know your love for them and our appreciation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and injured, those facing or recovering from surgery, as well as those petitions listed in our various parish prayer journals, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, Andre Christian, and for all the dead, may they be welcomed to everlasting life and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that you've brought to the altar today. To us, in all our weakness and fear, O God, you have entrusted the prophetic mission of proclaiming your word to a world often unable and unwilling to hear. Strengthened by your spirit, may we never be ashamed of our faith, but confess your name before others so that your son may acknowledge us before you on the day of his coming. Welcome us into his sacred heart. And all this we pray in his name, for he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Just one moment because I need to speak to those on camera. Dear folks, you know how much we long for you to be here with us. But we also know your reluctance until there is a pandemic. We thank you for your generosity as we thank all those here. Know of our prayers and know that our mission continues because of you and because of you. Thank you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, will be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. Amen. 
receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of our heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with Saint Bede and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. We pray especially for our fathers, grandfathers, and father figures who have gone before us. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you process to receive Holy Communion, please follow the guidance of the ushers. We strongly encourage choosing to receive communion on the hand. When you receive the host, please step to the side where there is a yellow marking on the floor before lifting your mask to consume the host. If you are wearing gloves, please remove them before receiving communion on the hand. After receiving communion, please go to your seat using the aisle on the other side of your section of pews. There you will again form a single line as you join other communicants returning to their seat. We thank you for your patience while these precautions remain in place. That's just the thing, please. I tell you. The Lord is 
is close to the broken hearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. All who trust in him shall not be condemned. That which I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, says the Lord. And that which you hear whispered into your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. That which I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, says the Lord, and that which you whispered into your ear, proclaim upon the housetop. 
pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now for the special blessing for those who are honored today, those who are our fathers, those who have gone before us, those who are with us, and those who are with us in spirit, but not in person today. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for who we are because of you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your protection because we never felt afraid. Thank you. And for those who may be having difficulty remembering their fathers for whatever reason, may this prayer of blessing bring a little bit of healing to you as well. Let us bow our heads for God's blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless our fathers, godfathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, foster fathers, and father figures, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, that we their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect and gratitude. And grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
got some tuna now. We're just going to get some tuna. I don't think it's going to be for a while.